I think that's the distinction in, in the course workbook where it talks about you have real thoughts, but you're not aware of them. In other words, real thoughts are inspirational. You know, they're, they're in and of the spirit. And, and therefore, you know, they can seem to involve actions. You know, there was, in the, in the play that we called Jesus' Life, there was inspirations. I'm sure there was many, many inspirations along the way. And then, wow, during those three years of public ministry when he was just totally identified with the Holy Spirit, that was like pure inspiration. There was a movie playing there, and there was all these actors, and there was the Jesus character, and all these seeming miracles that happened that people wrote about for centuries afterwards. They were still, still writing about those because they're so extraordinary, they're so transcendental, they're so, they're just out of pattern, they don't fit in with the way of, ways of the world. But, but you might say that was just an inspired life. That's an example of an inspired life as far as in the world. The inspired use of the puppet. Uh, and, and that's what you're aiming for. You're, you know, the purpose is not really the disappearance of the universe, you know, purpose is, is being guided, being inspired, and through that inspiration, having your mind become vertical, becoming lined up with, with God and with Spirit, and, and then that just expresses. So you don't make these distinctions in form. Sometimes people think of stillness as a body having to sit still in some kind of a lotus position and so on and so forth. Um, you know, even things like like psychic abilities or psychokinesis or levitating or these kind of things, those really are just like little, like little offshoots, little symbols along the way. But the, the grand experience is this state of, of vertical alignment. You don't even stop for the trinkets, you know. Uh, there's one man who, who's been here a number of times to the monastery. Some of you remember Joe, but he wrote me this long email about a week or two ago where he actually, he has so many interpersonal struggles with, with women and with dating and everything that, um, you know, he was terrified of, of having a relationship and yet he knew that the spirit was like calling him in that direction to move through his unconscious stuff in a faster way. And so he wrote to me this big long email and then he said, oh, I went down to LA and I actually watched a woman levitate. And he said, but, that was nothing. The, the real miracle is, I'm dating an attractive Chinese woman. <laughs> you know, that was at the end. For, the levitating woman? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But he, his fear of intimacy, his fear of facing his own stuff was much greater in his mind. And so he said, this is the real miracle. I'm, I'm dating this attractive Chinese woman. So he was happy to talk about that because you know, deep down we know we have to face our fears, we have to face our darkness, we have to let the darkness arise, we have to, we have to let it come up and out. We can't keep pushing it down and hiding from it and keeping the lid on it. That's really a beautiful kind of sign of what we're doing, you know, and that's, again, that's how we talk about relationships, that's how we, we talk about mind training, that's what we're encouraging. And, and inspiration, there's going to be lots of inspiration and more and even more and even more as you get more focused and more open to it and it will be it will end up being what seems to be a life of of inspiration in all ways in which all kinds of things will come through and you're not like so focused on the disappearance of the universe or or you know seeing everything as an illusion you know that's the direction is heading, but it's only heading that way through inspiration. It's not heading that way through words. It's not like a chant. You can't just say, this world is an illusion in so many hundred thousand times or a million times or trillion times, like a mantra. And then you get some kind of on the five trillionth time, you know, ah, we did it. That's, that's the, the number of the quantity required, you know. It just doesn't work that way. We, we have to do it through inspiration, not through kind of trying to say it in words, or, or in the end, reach it through words. You know, it's, it's just truth is not reached 
two words. I've been happy, I was, even though David was very shy and very much a loner and da-da-da-da-da, I've been happy to let the inspiration come through in kind of a, an animated way. Kirsten would say, oh, you're definitely a talking mystic, you know, it's a lot of talking. But, and for some it's different. Ramana Maharshi was very, very different. Um, it, it's still the same inspiration though. You, you have to follow what your heart's telling you. You have to follow that deep passion and inspiration because that's what gives you the impetus really to go all the way with it. That's like your energy, that's your focus, that inspiration, so yeah.